for this profit in the sky for Ethiopia State Airline. Ethiopian Airlines is one of the Africa's most profitable carrier, and while its fortunes have grown, it has also had some problems getting its money. VOA's Paul Diho has more. Africa's Ethiopian Airlines is a profitable carrier in a troubled industry, but it has been experiencing steady growth. Ethiopian Airlines revenue rose 10.3%, about $2.4 billion in the 2015-16 fiscal year. While passenger numbers climbed 18% to $7.6 million, and net profit was up to 70%. The state-owned career is Sub-Saharan Africa's biggest by revenue, and has been rapidly expanding in its bid to become a global player through its increasingly crowded hub in Addis Ababa. The career wants to increase revenues to $10 billion by 2025 and expand its fleet to 140 aircraft from less than 90 now. With sites on Asia, but the airline still faced some challenges particularly in African states where foreign exchange shortages meant it could not repatriate earnings held in local currencies. Today, among these four countries, between Nigeria, Angola, Sudan, and Egypt, we have 220 million U.S. dollars worth of local currencies, whether it's in Nara, in Nigeria, or Kwanzaa in Angola, or the Egyptian pound, or the Sudanese pound because there is severe shortage of foreign currency, foreign exchange, so we are not able to take whatever we sold. So it is stuck there, it has been trapped for more than two years, and it is subject to devaluation, and this is huge challenge for, for us and for the other African countries. Gabri Mariam also added that the issue undermined the benefits of an oil price drop during the 2015-16 fiscal year. The falling oil prices in the period also undermined the business from those African nations, with the addition of the Boeing 787-8 Dreamliners and Airbus 350 planes to its fleet. Ethiopian Airlines, a state-owned carrier, will be stiff competition for the other carriers, including South African Airlines and Kenya Airways. In addition to adding routes to China, Ethiopian Airlines is also considering adding Jakarta and Singapore to its destinations this year. Paul Ndiho, VOA News, Washington. Let's go next to South Africa. The country has seen a resurgence of xenophobic attacks, but calls for unity seem to be taking root. And President Jacob Zuma says his country welcomes foreign nationals and allows them to thrive. Channel Television's Bureau Chief Betty Dibia has more. These have been the scenes in some parts of Johannesburg and Pretoria, South Africa's capital, in the past month. Arson, vandalism and looting, supposedly in protest against the presence of foreign nationals and allegedly associated crimes. I've been here since eight years. Everything I work for, everything, everything has gone. Please, I don't know what people, Nigerians, what they're going to do to help us. It's not easy. Yeah, it's not that we are doing a bad job. I mean, mechanic. Everybody that is doing mechanic at home, they know how it, what it costs for someone to destroy a whole workshop. Please, I don't know. Then a formal anti-foreigner protest march was approved, much to the dismay of many. Parallel group marches moved through streets, destroying vendors' property. It got hectic in some areas populated by foreign nationals. The, the policy, I'm not begging them. They, they must uh, stop their nation against us, otherwise we know how to defend themselves. Against, we know how to defend ourselves against them. Fellow Nigerians, please, I am here to appeal to you to keep the peace. Let me tell you that South Africans, they are your brothers and sisters. Outside the Home Affairs Department, they outline their concerns and demands. We want the Department of Home Affairs to stop issuing asylum seeker status.
to Nigerians, yes. to Zimbabweans, yes. to Pakistanis, yes. to Somalians, yes. and every other person. Yes. We want the Department of Home Affairs to revoke the citizenship of every foreigner found with drugs in South Africa, yes. involved in sex trafficking, yes. in sex trafficking of women, and they're involved in human trafficking. They must be deported. Things soon got back to normal in Rosettenville and Pretoria, but looting flare-ups happened in Gippistown near Johannesburg for two days. While many condemn the violence as xenophobic, South Africa's President Jacob Zuma disagrees. What I'm saying, we should not highlight that and give a wrong impression that South Africans are xenophobic. I'm just trying to say, let us put it correctly. Because we are, we are putting South Africa as a country that is xenophobic, and I'm arguing that we host more foreigners in this country than many countries. <clears throat> in fact, I think we are something like number 10. But we stay with, we, we, we stay with the foreigners, unless there's an incident. It's an uneasy calm, and many foreign nationals are still worried. They can, they can do anything at any time, so we are just trying to just be safe and to be our brother's keepers here. For now, many have only the reassurances of government to hold on to. Hopefully that will come through for them when it matters most. Well, you're watching Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCory. Now to Nairobi for our next story about what is now East Africa's largest biogas energy plant. Reporter Lenny Rovaga has more from Naivasha, Kenya. VegPro runs its factory here in Naivasha entirely on clean energy converted from biomass. Kenya sort of is one of the f f forerunners in clean energy, so automatically made sense for us to move into that arena so that we could sustain ourselves with our own energy and obviously we get the, the benefits of the byproduct of the clean energy back onto the land. Biomass is a really just a technical term for decomposing plant residue and animal waste. Here, it is converted into biogas that then fuels generators. But this company is eyeing expansion. Its plans include a 10 megawatt solar plant also here at Gorge Farm. Lenny Ruvaga for VOA News, Naivasha, Kenya. It's time now for a short break, but before we go, a reminder to visit our website, channelstv.com, for all the latest information around the clock. You can also find us on youtube.com forward slash channels web. Still to come, a new American television series looks at African history, from the origins of human civilization to the threshold of the modern world. Well, that story after the break.